I, I broke down in tears for the first time in probably 10 years um, on my kitchen floor. And it was, uh, it was just a really uh, a serious battle. But as knowing that this conference was ahead and going off of what Troy was saying about a way of being better, continuing to improve, that is literally what kept me from burning the whole <laughs> down. <laughs> the American Pastured Poultry Producers Association. We just got checked into the hotel. We did some sessions uh, this morning and did this afternoon. Had some really good talks. Uh, I'm going to go over some of those talks later on in the video. But they were awesome. Now we're going to head to the APA Olympics, which is a lot of fun. So one of the vendors at the APA conference is the Power Scrub. And so here is a smaller unit. This is for washing uh, and some of the models have grading capabilities. So your eggs go in there, it's steam and scrub them. Spit them out here, you could work on that. This one's a little bit more advanced. You still have to hand load the eggs here, but this one has a candle attachment where you could candle the eggs and steam and brush them. And then it's got a turntable where they come back and you can pack here. Good looking unit, but then there's this one. And so this one, you don't have to manually hand load them. You put all the eggs right here. They automatically come in, they get steamed and scrubbed. And then Uncle Alfred and I are debating, we're gonna to talk to the guy tomorrow and figure out, it, it, does this sort them by size? Is that what this is? Cause if this sorts by size, then this is the unit for us. <laughs> okay, we're doing Ag Olympics. Oh wait, look who it is. <laughs> Y'all going down. <laughs> Okay, well, number one. Right. So, Uncle Alfred's on a uh, There's Uncle Alfred build, helping build the uh, <laughs> the paper chicken. That's their chicken. Fried chicken penis. All right, guys. Whoa. <laughs> Okay, so it is a sizer and a grater. We were right. And we're gonna watch it be tested with some wooden eggs. There we go, so it's being steamed and scrubbed inside this unit here. There's the candle. You can see that that thing is real bright right there. I am new to Mike's content, but excited to hear his talk on ducks. There he is right there. It's gonna be a good talk. So, and I got every piece of equipment on our farm stuck in snow drifts. Um, so I would like to say that uh, I, I broke down in tears for the first time in probably 10 years um, on my kitchen floor and it was, uh, it was just a really uh, a serious battle. But as knowing that this conference was ahead and going off of what Troy was saying about a way of being better, continuing to improve, that is literally what kept me from burning the whole goddamn place down. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, this, what this ended up doing for us is making us the whole lot more money, opening up a whole lot more opportunities for us to uh, diversify and grow the other enterprises.
So the sheep is really what my wife and I want to focus on. Uh, and we like the custom grazing too, but the sheep, the sheep are our animals and the custom grazing heifers are not. Um, so we're, we're, you know, we're, we're gonna be able to just keep growing our sheep flock because the chickens are in the hen pen, uh, increasing the, the pasture health. So very, very, very complimentary. Two sides. So I, I take the rounded side and I, if I take the whole thing, I put it in the pipe with the rounded side up at the, at the union of the two pipes. Does that make sense? Yep. Inside the pipe. Yep. And I, I screw that in and then I drill the holes for the double, double spike uh, fencing post and plop it right in, usually with a, a hammer, kind of slam it in there a little bit, and, uh, and then move on to the next union. Uh, this so is the top three. I'm gonna pretend there's music going right now. Woo! Go green team. That's green team. Uh, yeah, we have a chicken song we can play. Number three, Roseanne. Look at her go. Man, she's moving. So the cool thing about last night was this, and this is what I knew we would discover. Every one of these people did it differently. And not necessarily one way was better than the other. Certainly there were faster ones. Some did it on cones, some did it on the table. And as you'll see by our next runner up. Place. Some of you might recognize him. He was just here. Congratulations! Here he is on the table. Someone was like really had a name. Oh, I don't know why. You can hear the background noise. Look at that. I thought maybe he was more of a manager these days, so I wasn't sure what was going to happen. <laughs> Boom! Second <laughs> place. And uh, third for seconds. Now, for the gold. Who got the gold? Very unassuming. The silent killer. Look at this. They just fall off. He's so calm. Yeah, very calm. They just come right off. I don't mean it's like, you don't belong here. I'm just going to take you off. <laughs> Done. Watch him take off the breast. Watch him take off the breast. Look at that. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
All right, it's the last day of the APA conference, and uh, it's been good. It's been good. We've had a good time. We've learned a lot. We found a processor close to us who's opening in like a month, which is huge for us if we're going to start raising broilers again. We learned about milling your own feed uh, and you know how to source those materials. And, um, we're excited. This has been a really great conference. It's 18 degrees here where we're at, but uh, it's a little cold for us, but uh, it's been a really good conference. We're looking forward to this last day. Heavy lifting of what we do. And so specifically to turkeys, the Shenandoah Valley is kind of the birthplace of the turkey industry. A guy named Charles Wampler Sr. way back in the day, um, you know, his family would go collect wild turkey eggs out in the wild and incubate them, and then developed a company called Wampler, which was a huge turkey company that got bought out by somebody else since then. But you know, you're in turkey country when you have statues to turkeys in different places. And I bumped into him one time when our daughter was being born. Uh, he was like in his late 90s, and he was a volunteer at the hospital. And so someone introduced me to him. I'm like, oh, hi, you know, how you doing, Mr. Wampler? And uh, we started talking about things, and I was like, yeah, we run turkeys on pasture. We got this real far away look in his eyes, like, yeah, that's how we, we used to do it. And uh, you know, back in the 50s, that's what they would do. They would start turkeys in houses, and then they would put them out on these big pastures for the rest of their life. They had like 10, 15,000 turkeys to help on these fields. So inside of our business, we kind of have five things that we evaluate any enterprise with. These are Are they here? Hey pigs, <laughs> what are y'all doing? Did y'all miss me? Definitely seems like y'all missed me. All right, first pickers are out. They're headed out to the field. It's always an exciting time on the farm. So I know there's lots of discussion about pigs and corn and you know, go straight through them, how nutritional, there's lots of discussion, right? But ultimately there's also lots of discussion about sows and nutrition and how, um, especially when they're not close to farrowing, it's just kind of like a maintenance diet. And so I want to see, I want to show y'all what they did to the, the corn here in the corn maze. So they just stripped these cobs. I mean, they just bunch them. And like, what a great way to not waste stuff here on the farm. We love it. You know, chickens really do love this cool weather. It's moving day on to greener pastures. Just a wet, nasty day, but they saw me coming. They're doing some nice roosting this morning. It has rained so much today. I mean, and this is only the first day. We still got two more days of it. Welcome to the Gulf Coast of Texas, I guess. So it's been a rainy day. So I've just kind of been checking everything. I'm here in the brooder and I made a discovery. I had loofah planted out here in the yard of the chicken brooder. And I was like, how did these loofah get peeled? And then I realized the chickens are peeling them. They're, they're eating them. They're eating the skin off of it, but they don't eat the dry part. <laughs> I'm just a scratching post. <laughs> what y'all think? Huh? What y'all think? We've come a long way on our friendliness. <laughs> Hadn't given y'all a grape update lately because they've just been growing and now they're dormant. We're gonna start pruning. We're gonna start pruning each of these branches to just two buds. So you can see this, these are the buds that will produce our fruit. We're at our feed mill, getting some feed. This is Farmer Froberg's here. 
I don't think I captured it in the freeze preparation video, but all of our strawberry plants that we potted up uh, that were left over from in the field, we actually moved into this greenhouse during the freeze. Uh, because last year when we had a little freeze, we didn't with the plants and they got damaged and we lost a bunch of them. And so we moved them in there and then it started raining. So we moved them out here. They look good. We're happy with them. These uh, grapevines will go in the ground in the next, uh, I don't know, two weeks. I think there's a clip in here of uh, us making the rows and getting ready. It's time to expand our grapes. So, yeah. Well, we've gotten some rain and they're officially wallering. <laughs> oh, the rain, the rain, but the onions are loving it. This is onion weather. It's like, uh, 65 degrees today 70 degrees blue clear skies and onions as far as the eye could see we don't talk about heavy rain damage on fruit very often because truth be told like most of the time they are all right through heavy rains and while there was minimal rain damage we got oh in three days about 10 inches um and that was right after the freeze uh, there was still some, some damage from heavy rain, and I'm going to show you all what that looks like. So what we normally see is this intense bruising. And so no rhyme or reason for it normally. Like this berry was fully ripe before the rain started, and so it just kind of got hammered. Same thing with this. It was fully ripe, and just those heavy raindrops really start to get to it. Most of your immature fruit is good. And then any of your ripe fruit that was up in the plant is normally good. Like you can see this one, this tip was exposed. And so it got beat up, but the inside under that leaf there was fine. So that's just, that's what damage looks like from heavy rains. Oh yeah, Uncle Alfred's at a Blackberry Growers Conference in Arkansas. And so Uncle Alfred, if you're watching this, farm's in good shape, man. When the fog gets bad here, it gets bad. You can barely see the strawberries. The fog is so bad. All right. Muscadine Vineyard is pruned. The ones that were planted about a year ago. They look good, so we prune them down to two buds. That'll be our fruit producing branches this next season. We took the guards off too. We had little guards on the trunk so equipment doesn't hit it and these are able to stay protected so we took those off because they're maturing 